Hi guys, uh, my name is uh, Venkat. Uh, I have around 11 years experience in uh, IT industry and I have 2 plus years experience in RPA tools. Okay, so uh, as part of this demo, I will cover uh, the basic concepts of RPA and the couple of uh, details on UA path and position. And at the end, I will also cover the training agenda and what all benefits you will get, get from this training. Okay, so what is an RPA? RPA is a software robot wherein it uh, mimics the human interact interactions uh, by uh, 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 incorporating all the activities instead of process to uh, process the transactions, uh, manipulating data, triggering responses and communicating with other digital systems. The core idea of RPA uh, is very simple. Rather than uh, have people uh, to interact with applications, RPA uses ro uh, software robots that drive application user interface in the same way. Okay, RPA can work with applications even uh, if they don't have an application APIs exposed. Okay, it can use the uh, GUIs where the users uh, are now interacting with the GUI applications. Similar way, the RPA can interact with the applications and get the data, and, and even it can enter the data and uh, you know get the consolidated data as well. So I just uh, summarized a couple of uh, uh, RPA features. Uh, it's not limited to this, but these are the high-level features. So the first point is, you know, version control maintenance. Uh, each process uh, will be maintained in the version control system like SVN or TFS. And the second point is security, uh, uh, which is uh, the major concern for the customers. Uh, initially, uh, in a couple of years back, we use RPA. Uh, the customers are afraid of to use uh, RPA tools because of security issues, but now the security features are more uh, in RPA tools like, you know, uh, the RPA vendors itself, uh, you know, assuring that, you know, if any problems with security and if any penalty from the customers will be ready to pay that uh, penalty. So in that kind of assurance, uh, um, the RPA vendors are giving nowadays. The next step is large group deployment, basically, uh, uh, you can, uh, there are uh, robot uh, the number of robots you can deploy in the large group and you can uh, even scale up or down the number of robots based on the requirement without downtime and the next step is rule based uh, exception handling uh, uh, we have best features in rpa tools like in major tools like your path rotation and automation anywhere uh, to implement this uh, exception handling the job scheduling is to schedule the jobs okay the release environment is like you know to uh, deploy the packages for development, test and production environment like that. Highly elastic scalability is you know the to scale up or down the number of robots for the uh, for the uh, requirement uh, based on the customer requirement. The work use is basically to process the transaction by multiple robots. Yep, yeah. and these are the couple of benefits I just kept here. You know these are the reasons for selecting an RPA tool. Um, the major uh, uh, RPA benefits I kept here are the increased efficiency. Uh, Improved accuracy. This you will get by uh, configuring the robot because the robot will uh, will uh, work as per the configurations you in the process, and it's not doing even single mistake. And the process wise, uh, the performance wise, very speed compared to with humans. And the low operation all cost, and the scale up or down easily, uh, and the higher employee productivity and satisfaction. The better managed repeatable tasks, uh, reduce cycle time. Uh, average handling time is less compared to human and the redefined business workflows and the next one is easier agile process design and the next one is uh, richer data analytics as most of the RPA tools like UiPath and automation anywhere has the analytic related concepts also introduced and the fast time to markets uh, implementation process is very easy and we are in very faster manner you can implement the process and you can take it to market the next one is uh, reduce implementation Risks. The risk is very less because you no need to write any code, just drag and drop. And these are the major, uh, the around 12 uh, RPA tools I specified here. Out of these 12, three are the major tools like UiPath, Blueprint, and Automation Anywhere. As part of my training, I will cover UiPath and Blueprint. Okay, if you see the differences technology wise, UiPath is uh, the mostly, most rated uh, one in, uh, in the market. This uh, this uh, chart I got from the Gartner report, not the one I prepared. This is a little bit old report, which is uh, around six months back. The UA path rated around three point six seven. Nowadays, after since six months, UA path got matured in so many areas like artificial intelligence, machine learning, 
and the deep learning kind of integrations as well. And if you see the difference, a couple of features I kept in the right side, uh, and and all these tools, you know, the, developed on the Microsoft technologies. If you see uh, the uh, UiPath is on Microsoft, and the, uh, the Blue Prism is uh, C Sharp, and the Microsoft is again for automation and event. Okay, and so the RPA whatever we have is robotic pass automation. The next generation for RPA is intelligent pass automation. Because this RP is getting integrating with the artificial intelligence and machine learning concepts. Okay, so uh, the intelligent process automation refers to the application of artificial intelligence and related new technologies like uh, computer vision, cognitive automation, machine learning, all those things. So integration with third-party cognitive services like uh, uh, Google Deep Learning, IBM, Watson, Microsoft. There are so many artificial intelligence and machine learning related applications are getting integrated. Parts and automation even is also you know, booming like anything. Yeah. And, and if you see the right side table, now what is an RPA and next what is an RPA? So now the current number of tasks are getting automated, in future end type process will be uh, automated. The transactional RPA now and RPA plus artificial intelligence is going to come. Tactical POCs now and the in future strategic deployments are coming. A few quick wins now and durable long term value will get uh, using this IPA. Yeah. And if you uh, completely want to automate the uh, uh, digital operations, like you know, out of hundred percent, uh, you know, uh, for enterprise as activities, out of hundred percent RPA is sixty percent of work is there, and for cognitive uh, RPA is around fifteen percent work is there, and for chatbots uh, around fifteen percent work is there, and ten percent work is in artificial intelligence. Okay. So uh, first, now the current RPA tools are, you know, uh, the robotic process automation. When it comes for uh, intelligent process automation, uh, that is a combination of uh, cognitive RPA, chatbots, and artificial intelligence. And most of the work is on RPA tools, like 60% of enterprise process activities. Okay. <clears throat> I just kept one, uh, you know, simple slide that to make you understand uh, how the manual process is there to just assign a role to a user. And how uh, script-based business process automation, and how it will happen if you keep the uh, robot in place. Okay, uh, the implementation process for script-based uh, process automation is very huge time-taking process because you need to develop a lot of codes, and you need to interact with the third-party applications using XMLs and APIs. Okay, and you can match, you know, how the user is interacting with the manual process, you know, to systems, and how he is adding the role to a uh, user to a role. And you can see how the, you know, the script-based uh, business process, uh, you know, uh, interacting with the SQL database and APIs, and then interacting with the JMS queues, and then adding, adding the role, uh, role, adding user to a role, and then sending an email to this. And robot is very simple process here. It's just drag and drop, and you can make a process so that you know it will interact with the applications and it will do it uh, very faster. Okay, I just wanted to, you know. Uh, uh, cover a little bit, uh, you know, high architecture and component level for UA path and location. Okay, still now I just covered high level concepts of, you know, RPA. Now uh, I'm just going to talk about the UA path architecture and components. If you see uh, UA path architecture, there are three components here. One is UA path uh, studio, the second one is UA path orchestrator, and the, the last one is robot. UA path studio is basically uh, a place where a user will log in into it and then you develop some process and then deploy onto UiPath Orchestrator. UiPath Orchestrator is the place where you will configure some user management related things and you will configure robots there and you deploy the processes there and then uh, the robots will execute the process once you schedule the job. All those things will be there in the Orchestrator. It's a web-based application. The UiPath is a studio where you develop all your process. Once you deploy your process onto, ser onto server, which is uh, UiPath Orchestrator, the robot will pick the job, uh, pick the job and then execute the corresponding process and and it, rent, it interacts with the uh, third part applications based on the configurations you did in the uh, process <clears throat> okay and the robot if we talk about it and there are two kinds of uh, robots one is attended and the second one is unattended attended is basically just to monitor the jobs and process and the unattended robot is basically to execute the process here okay so these are the high level components of your path uh, here and so i just kept you know two things here one is for studio screenshot of your path and the Orchestrator uh, screenshot of uh, UA path. You can see a couple of things here. The left side, uh, the one I'm showing here is the couple of activities where we uh, to configure your applications to migrate the data, to integrate the applications, to consolidate the data preparation, or to interact with any 
like how human is interacting with applications. See all those activities you can see on the left side. And the middle one is the area where you implement your process. And the right side of the properties of each activity here. Okay, once you do your process, you go to set up here and then you deploy the process. And that process will go and sit in the process here in the orchestrator here. And the robots will be configured on the robots. And you can see how many robots are deployed here, how many processes are deployed. How many assets are there? How many queues are there for the passing the transactions? How many schedules you did? All those things you can see in the control room here. Okay, uh, sorry, in the orchestrator here. And the next one I wanted to talk about is groupism architecture and components. The architecture is, I can say, is the thick client uh, and server uh, uh, framework here for groupism, whereas uh, UiPath is a thin client and server is very, uh, you know, the complexity is very less compared with UiPath uh, groupism. Okay, here you can see a couple of uh, you know uh, areas here like you know studio again. Okay? Again, the studio will have again like, object studio, and the second one is process studio. And there is one thing called control room where you will configure all your uh, robots there, and you will associate your process to execute it. And one more thing is system manager where you will configure all the users and the administration related things here. Once you develop the object studio, those object studios will be used to develop your process to interact with your applications using the VBOs, which is visible business objects which will be developed in the object studio here. Once you deploy your process onto group system database, from the control room, robots will interact with your process and then it takes the process from the group system database and interacts with the process here and then it interacts with the VBOs to interact with your business logic using, using, using user interface here. Okay, so that is the high level uh, uh, process, uh, high level components of uh, group vision. And if you see, I just kept a couple of screen starts here uh, for group vision. One is studio, where you can see uh, two uh, parts here one is process studio and the office studio here. And the control room is basically to manage your robots and process deployments here. And you can see job schedules and you know the session management also here. On the right side, one admin related things like you know system manager, where you can see all your user related things tools related things, management and uh, uh, our license related things here. As part of my training, uh, this is the agenda. So in UI path, I would cover around 25 classes and each class will have one use case. Okay, And those use cases will be helpful to you to implement your class in any of the domains like banking or finance or telecom or whatever the domains. Each class will have one use case for given UI path and group vision. And those use cases are uh, uh, on these concepts like programming concepts and desktop application automation like you know to interact with your wordpad excel applications like that and data migration you know by opening the uh, portals and it interacts with the portals to enter the data to get the data interact it interacts with the database related uh, tables all those activities can be done in the data migration and data entry parts and the next one is integration and data consolidation it will interact with the multiple applications to you know to integrate if i want to you know centralize uh, um, if you want to prepare a centralized process to interact with multiple applications and prepare this consolidated data i can integrate without having any apis exposed from the third party applications and i have also covered a couple of manual activities automations like how to interact with applications and prepare it and send it email or you know whatever the activities you want to do every activity can perform and the next one is amazon flipkart automation and it interacts with the Amazon and it gets the data and send an email automatically. After uh, this agenda, I will, I will cover one Amazon automation uh, process also just to show you an example like how it works in automation. And the email automation and the digitalization and the uh, PDF automations, fast execution by robot, robot configuration and deployment, all these parts uh, I would cover in 25 use cases and in, in 25 classes. And group vision around 20, 15 to 20 classes, I will cover 15 use cases for this. And as part of my training, what I would uh, do is I will provide the material for both UI path and group vision, and I would also uh, provide the daily class notes. I will upload the class notes and the daily class recordings onto uh, the, into YouTube and the Google Drive, and I will also prepare two, I also prepare two hundred interview questions. I will provide at the end of the training, and I will also support to get the job until you get the job. I'll, my support will be there. Okay, so. Uh, I'll just show you one uh, automation in UA path. Okay, so what I did here is just you know uh, it automatically opens an explorer, in an explorer. It types something in uh, automation uh, in Amazon application, and then it searches for something and then get the data and put it in Excel and send an email. Okay, for now I just you know process to get the Amazon data and then uh, it will load into an Excel sheet. The email automation I have not done to cover at the activities here now. 
let me execute this process uh, and then show you how it works. So the first step what I did here is it opens an application uh, in Internet Explorer, okay, uh, and then it will type, it will go and type into uh, uh, into uh, Internet Explorer like Amazon.in and then it will go and type in search box and gets all the Samsung mobiles and it fills in an Excel sheet and then it will segregate the data into two parts like mobile um, of cost less than 7,000, mobile of cost greater than 7,000 like that and then it will fill in the Excel sheet and give it to you. That is what the pass I wanted to know. So if I go and see now, there is one, uh, uh, there is one, um, uh, one uh, Excel sheet I, I prepared, okay, Excel sheet I prepared uh, for the storing Amazon data. Okay, so here, just let me open this. Uh, I'll just, let me delete the data here and see how the Amazon automation will work here. Okay, so now close this, all this data. Okay, just delete it, save it. If you see actual data from Amazon, there is no data here. Less than 7,000, how many mobiles are there? There is no data here. And if you see greater than 7,000, there is no data here. I'm just closing this Excel file. If I go and execute this Amazon uh, automation, it will go to Amazon application and then you get the data and then fill it in Excel sheet. Okay, normally to get this uh, data, it will take uh, uh, five minutes to 10 minutes to prepare the data for a human. Okay, but if you see around 10 seconds it took, okay, if you go and see the data uh, in the file, Amazon data, it prepared the data here, okay, all the data from Amazon, what Amazon application is open. It is opened the Amazon portal here with the Amazon data in, and it typed the data here and it got, it got all the mobile names and cost here. If you go and see Excel sheet here, the mobile names and cost here I got. Around 25 mobile names and 25 cost I got it. What I, what automation process did now here is, it, uh, it is converted into proper cost, it removed all the commas, it removed all the dots, it removed all the spaces and loaded properly for all the mobiles less than 7000 here and for all the mobile less than, greater than 7000 here. It is a simple process I just executed just to make you understand how this process will execute. Like this, we can do, there are so many uh, examples like this. If you see my batch file here, there are so many parts I did here, around 20, uh, five processes I did here and each process is having one use case here. Okay. Similarly, I did around 15 to 20 use case in the blue prism as well. Okay. So that's all about the uh, brief about my uh, RPA tools, UiPath and uh, blue prism and the basic concepts in RPA. If you have any questions, uh, please uh, get in touch with uh, the concerned person and, uh, and call me for uh, if you have any doubts. Okay. Thank you.